Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of GIS Answers. If you like the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Today what we'll be looking into is Bigfoot sighting locations. Uh, this is the ArcGIS Hub, the Esri uh, site. And uh, we'll download this data and take a look at it in Google Earth. And uh, this is very simple to do. Uh, the data is from the BFRO, the Bigfoot Research Organization. Uh, the majority of the data is for North America, uh, mo mostly the, the United States, but there are uh, quite a few sightings in Canada, um, but not many outside of North America. There's a few outside of North America, a few in the rest of the world. But uh, for anybody who's interested in big Bigfoot data, this is um, quite a significant a uh, number of sightings. Uh, as you can see, there's over 3,800 3, records. Uh, when I say sightings, it's, it's not uh, visual sightings, um, not only visual sightings. It could be uh, wood knocks, uh, vocalizations, uh, uh, footprints, um, Bigfoot nests, or, or any, any kind of um, activities or um, um, evidence related to Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, or whatever you like to call him. So this is the ArcGIS Hub, and I've searched on Bigfoot, and I've come across this, this data, Bigfoot locations, and I'm going to download this data. I'm going to click on that. It gives, gives you some options, a CSV file, KML, shapefile, GeoJSON. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to download uh, the KML, the Keyhole Markup Language. And we're going to save that. And then once it's loaded, we're going to open up ArcGIS, uh, no, uh, Google Earth, sorry. And... Uh, I've done that already, and as you can see, you'll get all those points coming in um, to Google Earth, and you can zoom in, as you can see in uh, Washington State, quite a extensive cluster of the data, of the data points. And you can click on points and you can see the records. Um, here you can see campers here, loud vocalizations, fish lake. That's considered a class B sighting by the BFRO. That's Washington state. And the good thing about uh, looking at this data in Google Earth, we can have a look at some of the uh, 3D we have the terrain 3D imaging on so we can pan around look at some of the sightings vocalizations and footsteps sometimes it smells they say that the Bigfoot has um, quite a unique nasty smell but in this case a family on bikes see sees a black hairy creature walking in a riverbed. And actually, there's something to note that a lot of these um, sightings are along riverbeds, close to water. But obviously, in Washington State, there's quite a few remote areas, quite a lot of remote area and uh, mountainous areas too perfect for uh, Bigfoot uh, habitat.
and this is quite interesting. An off-roader testing his snow machine observes an oversized gorilla. And that's considered a Class A sighting. Very, very, very interesting. So we have lots, lots of uh, sightings along the Northwest. So thousands and thousands of sightings. Let's just zoom out and look at the map for the United States. You notice where there is not a lot of uh, vegetation like in the prairies. Midwest, not much. But when you're uh, looking into Florida, there'd be huge clusters of sightings. What I plan on doing with this data is doing some analysis as far as analyzing uh, distances from watercourses, riverbeds and uh, seeing if there's a correlation between those two. I believe there is. A lot of these sightings are adults that recall um, encounters when they were young. Along the Appalachians, quite a few sightings there. Real cluster of sightings in Ohio. Just on the fringes of cities. So there's a Class A sighting. A large hairy creature drinking from a pond. Again, um, quite a, I believe there could be some kind of correlation with uh, water. Obviously, if the Bigfoot does exist, they'll have to drink water just like we do. And there's another one fairly, fairly close to a, a lake by the look of it. Now, all of these encounters are supposed to be investigated by and documented by the BFRO, the Bigfoot Research Organization, and they have um, created this database and they update it and uh, work on it. Not a lot of data in Canada. Probably because the uh, BFRO is not active, that active in Canada, and they haven't done the investigations yet. And then, and then again, a recollection of a sighting from an adult recalling seeing things when they were young vocalizations now a lot of these vocalizations um, could be uh, wolves um, especially in Canada uh, you know when you're looking at Algonquin Park around this area here there's a lot of uh, wolves in the area and I, I believe you know some of the, some of the um, reports could be uh, wolves howling and uh, people mistake them for something else.
but not many in Canada. Quite a few in uh, northern US. The dates range. I mean, the, you couldn't say there's clusters of uh, uh, particular years in particular areas. They're, you know, from ranging from 1962 here all the way up until the 2000s, 2006, 2009. So, all kinds of uh, data to look at. If you're interested in this, you can download it yourself and uh, have a look. Um, we also have a web map um, that contains this data and it's online for people to view. And uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting. And if you, I, you know, if you do have your own sightings, I suggest that you report them to the BFRO and you can search for them on the internet and uh, find their location. I can't remember the, the website off the top of my head. Probably bfro.org. Um, but uh, don't quote me on that. I'm sure you can find it yourself. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll see you again.